Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about this displays the typography effect within Blender. This was originally requested by people uh, with a reference on Behance. The original software used to make this animation was uh, Cinema 4D and After Effects. And my first intuition to make this effect is to just use After Effects. But there is a one issue that probably will be better resolved uh, by any kind of procedural CD software, which is the this kind of uh, segments of different width. And uh, today we are going to make all this kind of effect just within Blender, which means we are going to use the composite of Blender. So let's start. So here we in Blender, and there is a node tree which you do not need to worry about because we are going to start from scratch. Here I just want to mention the concept. Uh, previously, I mentioned when I started the animation, the most concerning part, in my opinion, is all these kind of segments of different length or different width. And uh, that's basically a concept called a recursive subdivision. And it sounds to be very complicated because I used it to make like a 40 minutes long tutorial talking about that. Uh, here, we do not need to spend the 40 minutes long tutorial for this concept because uh, this is a simpler form of just the, a a uh, linear pattern which we can directly accomplish with this accumulator field node. This node uh, has been in Blender since what 3.1 or 3.2, which means many people have already made tens of tutorials talking about this accumulator field. I don't really want to repeat that. Uh, so if you want to know details, you can watch all these kind of tutorials. I'm just going to touch the most basic part of this accumulator field. This accumulated field node is, uh, is basically a serial loop node. So for example, uh, I have a formula and I have a formula of x and I'm uh, plus a y, which is a random value. So let's just call that the r, which is a random value. And I get a new x value and I'm going to return this x value to plus a new random value, which is input from this random value and to result a new x value. And we repeat this kind of action over and over again. But uh, what this means is we are going to get this x value as the final product, which turns to be the translation of our points. So we can see this kind of different grid has been transfer, uh, translated differently to different positions, okay? Uh, but it also means we can get the random value, which is the step value, and we can use that to scale our grid, which is one one size, accordingly due to this translation, so that it forms kind of a connected patterns that all these kind of grid are touching each other. And this is basically the concept. Here's one problem with this setup. Since we're accumulating values, which means we are just uh, adding a new values at the end of the sequence. If we're increasing the count of the points, then it will just grow infinitely. If you're really going to make a procedural setup, then this is not a very ideal. Every time you have to change the size, then you have to change this kind of random value. And uh, you realize after you change all this kind of random value, you have to go back and to change the amount of the count in order to uh, make it reach the destination you are looking for. In this particular case, we need to have a stop value. And uh, I'm not going to talk about details of this stop value. I'm just going to directly use the presets of a float range, which you can directly download for free from the link in the description. Okay. Uh, this is basically just an accumulated field node plus some nodes, like it's just five nodes in total to achieve the effect, as I mentioned. Uh, in this particular case, okay, uh, the random value node will just go into the step and we're going to set a stop value, maybe like a two. And I'm going to use the value output to drive the translation of our grid instances. And I'm going to use the step value to drive the scales so that we do not need a, another new subtract in order to get the steps up. So right now we lose all of our geometry. The reason is every time you're using a stop mode, you probably want to. Uh, every time you're using this is kind of a step value, you need to plug in a geometry for some statistic function. And once you do that, 
then you recover everything and you realize the destination is actually two. We have one and two. Okay. And uh, now you can increase or decrease the count. You realize no matter how you change them, their stop value is always at the two. So that you only need to change one values instead of two values. Okay. So this is the setup. And the rest is basically simple. We're trying to set the positions and we're trying to set the scale of instances. Now we start with a simple grid. This is just a, almost a default grid of one one sides. Um, but I changed the vertices number into two two because I do not need extra geometry. Uh, I also transformed by 0 0.5 on x axis because I want to make sure the origin is on one edge. So that uh, no matter how I instance, it always goes at this origin direction instead of going to the middle point. Okay, so this is the idea. So now we have all these kind of instances. I would like to center them. So we probably can take a kind of a center geometry. And it doesn't work because uh, it's instances. So we realize the instances, then it'll, everything will be centered. So this is the concept. Okay, so knowing that we can increase the size of the grid and we can change the amount of the stops, maybe at a four. The reason I'm doing that is because we're going to rotate these entire functions. Uh, we may try to transform it, or we may try to rotate the instance. It does not really matter. So in this case, we probably will rotate like this, maybe negative 30 degree. And then we're going to trim a box from this setup. In this case, we're trying to use the boolean. So we take a mesh boolean. Okay. And then we need a kind of boxes. So let's take a cube, just a single cube. So now we trim out the center part, but I want to intersect. So we plug two at together. And let's increase the size of the cube a little bit more. So now we have this kind of a segment, okay? Now we can go back to the beginning of this node tree uh, where we are controlling this count. So we can plug a, a group input inside so that uh, we can use the, we can control this count uh, in the modifier panel by increasing the count, you are decreasing the width of all, each segment and you're increasing the count, of course. And by decreasing the count, you're increasing the width of it every segment. This is also why I'm using this stop mode so that by using a single toggle or single value, I can control this entire setup without manipulating all this kind of random value thing. But of course you can plug a seed as well, but you can do that in your free time. Okay. Next, uh, we need to move all these kind of polygons okay, in the direction of rotation. Uh, here we have to get to understand this entire hierarchy of this setup that we have to rotate before mesh boolean in order to get this setup. Okay, we cannot rotate afterwards. And uh, here I do not care if you rotate instance or you are transform after realize instance. The result does not really change anything. Okay, but uh, what's important here is once we mesh boolean or in order to mesh boolean, we have to realize the instance. This also means we cannot use translate instance because there is no instances. Okay, so here what do we do? Uh, because we're initially uh, instancing a grid without additional geometry, what we can do here is we can set a position and try to effect uh, its face domain. So we can interpolate the domain at a face domain. So that whatever value we're putting inside to it is for the entire polygon. Okay. So now if we try, for example, let's uh, combine XYZ with this entire offset. Uh, it does not to, uh, it's not a very obvious because everything has been translated at the same time. So if we plug a random value node, then now it's still not very obvious because all these kind of polygons are connected to each other. I think it has something to do with the mesh pooling, which actually merge the distance of all these kind of points. So we need to split the polygons. Let's take a split edges. 
So now every polygons are split from each other. So now if we decrease the seed, you can see they are actually having a random value for each polygon to move on the x axis. Okay. But uh, we need all these now polygons to move at the direction they rotated. So we need to get a vector according to the rotation. So here, let's firstly let's combine Ula. Uh, let's combine Ula node so that I can plug the 30 or negative 30 to the rotation. Okay, so now we have this kind of rotation. And I'm going to get a vector from this rotation. So this is a vector, a rotation to vector. Yes, rotation to vector. And initially our vector is facing y axis because uh, if I do not have rotation, they are facing y axis. So I'm going to use the value one. The index number of computer always start from zero. So zero is x, one is y. So we set that to one. Okay. Uh, the the building of this rotation to vector is pretty easy. So you basically just uh, set up uh, whatever vector and you try to vector rotate. Rotate with the rotation that you have. That's basically the concept. So you're creating a kind of a vector from uh, a rotation. Okay. So now let's take, let's go back uh, negative 30 and we're trying to scale. Uh, we can scale it. And now if we plug into the offset, then you realize this effect. Uh, let's try with the maximum. Then we can see this animation, right? Right now, this uh, random value is essentially controlling the initial offset of this entire uh, setup. And then if we take a math node uh, by adding and subtracting, then we're animating it, okay? So if we are clamping that uh, to a certain level, then initially we have this is set up, we can actually increase the clamp. So we can take a map range to uh, a higher values. So maybe uh, maybe 4.7. And then we are trying to subtract in that, then you can realize uh, they start with an offset and then they go back to the original state. So this is what uh, we are going to have. Okay, but uh, this is also a problem that uh, Right now, every value is going to the right upside the corner. So how can we actually go negative corner? So we are going to take a random value, another random value, and set that to Boolean mode. So there is a probability it gets a, a true. There is another probability to give a false. And we can take a switch node and uh, take a float or integer. Mm, let's just uh, take a float, yes. Take a float and we are trying to get these values with a negative. Negative, so it can give the negative value and the positive value. So we just plug that in and output that into this interpolate domain. So some of them goes to the positive value, some of them goes to the negative value, and we can change the seed of that. Okay. This is completely procedural, and by subtracting this kind of add function, then we have everything being done. So here, this is a little bit over uh, ex uh, exaggerated. So we just uh, change the values a little bit. So now this is the animation that we get. If you're unsatisfied that we can increase the, uh, the count, then this is what we're getting. Okay. You can make this into the animation, whether you're recovering or spreading that out, it's basically the same. So this is basically the setup. Uh, of course, right now we're using a single um, add a value to control this entire animation, which means their speed is the same. You probably do not want the same speed, so you can increase another random value and multiply with the value we input. So concluding all this kind of concept, it's basically a preset, which is called a motion variance. So if we plug that into the values, then you can see it, origin, uh, it already has a kind of a speed variation and it has a start variation. So by just subtracting these levels, you can see some of the polygons is moving faster, some of the polygons, they are moving slower. It might not be very obvious, but uh, 
if you're trying to change the parameters, then you can realize um, how it goes. Like this polygon is just moving extremely slow. The other polygons is moving extremely fast. So uh, by manipulating this value, it gives you a better sense of movement. And all these kind of details uh, is the goal of this entire animation. Okay. Here's uh, one more thing I want to remind you, that uh, even if we add a start variance and a speed variance, this is essentially just a single parameter that we input into them. Uh, and this value, uh, the final output has been uh, clamped at the range of 0 to 1. Uh, regardless, I just want to mention that uh, this value is uh, actually linear, just like what uh, this float curve is showing. It's just a go directly goes from 0 to 1. Okay? And uh, if you try to render out this animation, it will look very ugly because the uh, start and the stop is very abrupt. So in order to ease, ease that, you just uh, use the float curve and ease, ease it. Okay, uh, that's basically the idea. Uh, it's not a very obvious within this viewport, but uh, you can try to render with or without this float curve, then you will realize this float curve is helping a lot. Of course, you can also change the other ways of interpolation, uh, for example, hyperbolic or other things. It does not really matter. But basically, that's kind of an idea. Okay, so now we have finished this entire animation of just a rectangular, but next we need to add the animation of the text as well. The, same, the setup is very similar, but there will be some additional problems. Uh, right now, you can either create a new geometry node tree, and uh, you probably need a new object as well. Okay, so let's uh, rename our initial object as rectangle, and the second object we can name that as uh, text. And you can try to create a new node tree or working with an existing node tree. But right now, this entire node tree has been used for our rectangle. Okay, just to know that. In reality, I used a single node tree to, for us to set up by using the geometry toggle. But I'm not going to show it to here because it will make things very complicated. I'm just going to duplicate the node tree. But before I do that, I'm going to take a group input so that I can control this parameter in the panels. And I'm going to set uh, with an offset for an animation. I'm going to name it as a rectangle. And the duplicate geometry, let's call that as a text. Previously, we know this animation is working, or this animation is like a rectangle shape because we are mesh boolean with a cube which also means we can match boolean with the text so we take a string to curves but this is the curves uh, let's take a blend or a b first and let's center it into the middle and we need to fill curve if you're having multiple strings like a blender or whatever then you need to go uh, you need to realize instance uh, you, in fact, you need to realize the instance for mesh boolean anyway. So let's plug that into the mesh boolean, and you realize it's not working. Everything disappears. There are several reasons to it. Uh, the major reason is actually the solidify. We need a thickness for better calculation. And uh, now we can see there's uh, something is wrong with all this kind of uh, uh, topology according to the triangles and angles. And the no uh, Whichever one does not fix yet, the real way to fix that is actually to increase this uh, offset scale. Uh, this solidify node is very simple. It's basically just an uh, extrude mesh node and merge by distance. It's quite simple. Okay. Uh, in the future, if you are watching this tutorial, maybe this solidify node is gone because it's implemented in Blender. So whichever way it works, it'll work. So now we have this uh, B being done, but there comes to be an issue that uh, initially um, this is a single polygon, but now due to a hollow in between, this becomes two polygons. This means that if we were trying to animate that, then you can realize that uh, the lower piece has been moved earlier than the upper piece. Uh, they should uh, run at the same time. 
but they aren't right now. The way to fix that uh, is just to capture the index information of this face before this mesh boolean. So that's even if they've been separated, they still recognize themselves as a single group. So now we capture these attributes and plug that into the custom ID. So now they has been they have been grouped together. Okay. So DC is good now. Let's just take that as a blend. blend. So everything is procedural. I just take the parameter to negative value so we have this text back and then if we combine these two then we have this animation being done okay uh, you can keyframe everything in your free time but i'm not going to do that i'm going to set material for the text so let's just text, uh, take the text material i'm going to use an emission shader we can Take whichever color does not really matter, but uh, let's just set that as a blue. Okay, and then we go to the. Uh, in fact, uh, we we mess up the two node tree. So this is the text, and the other is rectangle. And let's set the material. Okay, new material, rectangle. And then now this emission shader can be black or whatever other things here. It does not really matter. Uh, let's just take a kind of a dark. And uh, in fact, you can duplicate another rectangle and just to give another value or even another seed. Uh, according to your keyframe, you can just give a different colors or any other things. It does not really matter. Okay. Uh, once we have finished that, let's uh, add a camera. We can set also graphic view and let's reset the camera into the middle so now if we look at the render the view this is how it looks okay uh, it's kind of okay I guess then we need to render this animation or render the image in order for the compositing here we need to set up uh, several render layers for compositing. So let's uh, select our text object and hit M to put that into a collection of the text uh, collection. So now this layer we can call that all. And the original collection let's just uh, call that as a rectangle. All is just for visualization when you are tweaking keyframes and other things so that you do not need to go to other layers back and forth. Uh, but uh, for the rendering, we need to only render rectangle. And let's copy the settings. We only render text as well. So now we have three layers in total. One of them will not be rendered, so we disable the rendering. Okay. And uh, we are also going to turn on the alpha channel because we are going to subtract that channel. Okay. So once we set up this, let's just uh, take this render image. So now we have an uh, image being rendered. Let's go to the compositing. I'm now going to delete uh, everything which is not necessary. Within all, we do not see anything within our viewer because it's not being rendered. But I'm expecting to see something within the uh, other layers like rectangle we have the rectangle alpha the other places are black which means nothing and we also have the text we also have an alpha channel okay so basically the idea is we need to mix and choose the type of subtract these two alpha layer so then now we can actually see a hollow in between Next, we're going to mix again. So remember to switch back to the mix mode. So this is going to be the factor. So what you can do is here, you can if you just change the color, you can already see the effect. This is red and uh, uh, white. So basically the white color is giving the color of a lower one and the black color is giving the color of upper one. So this is the principle of this mix node. 
But if you have set up any kind of material or you have multiple uh, rectangle objects, then you may want to use the image. But these are just the kind of ideas. And finally, you just plug that into composites and render the entire animation again. Or maybe in the future, we already have the real-time compositing. I don't know how things will actually work, but uh, then the entire animation should be done. So this is just the comp, uh, this is just the any example. Uh, in reality, in order to make this animation more complete, you probably would like to add more settings and more nodes and so on. Um, but uh, this is basically the idea. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.